Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing Calc AB problem set 17. Um, there's a link to the problems and a playlist of all the problem sets uh, in the description. Let's do this. All right, first up, we are gonna try to find a K so that the function below is continuous. You know what the problem with that is? I'm gonna call this a bad problem. There is no value of K. It should say like find a value of K if one exists, I guess. I don't know if that was my intention, but what is the first step of trying to find a limit? The first step of trying to find a limit is you substitute in. So we're gonna have to like look at the limit from the left and the right, I guess, like, or try to find the limit overall. I don't know. When you try to find the limit overall, it does not exist. I mean, right now, just try to sub in, right? You're gonna get um, the square root of four, which is two, minus the square root of 16, which is four. The numerator gives you two minus four, negative two. Um, this thing is not in, it, it, it's not indeterminate. It just doesn't exist. This limit doesn't exist. There is no value of k. And maybe you just wanna say that and move on. I'm gonna like mess around a little bit first. Uh, so I looked at the limit from the left and then I started thinking like, all right, what is the limit from the left? Well, we know that the numerator, no matter what you approach from the left or the right, you're going to get negative two. So the numerator is approaching negative two. So now the question is, what is the denominator approaching? Well, the denominator is approaching negative zero, sorry, not negative zero, zero from the left, you're, right? Because like taking up like 2.9, you get negative 0.1, 2.99, negative 0.01 right? Negative one over a thousand, negative one over a million. So you have negative two divided by negative one over a million. That's basically two million. This thing is spiraling out of control. It's going to go to infinity. And then I looked at um, from the other side, the numerator is still going to negative two. Our denominator is approaching zero from the positives. So we have, uh, well, this should be negative infinity, um, right? Because we have negative two and then zero through the positives. This should be negative infinity. Let me fix that if I can. I'm throwing a negative sign here in yellow. There we go. And I'm also gonna add a little dot on the screen. That's fine, I hope. Um, all right, so overall that means uh, this limit does not exist. You cannot make it continuous. There is no value of K. So if I could write it again, I'd probably say find a value of K if one exists and it would be a better problem, but as constituted, what are you gonna do? All right because I'm committed to writing the problem sets and then doing them as if I'm not the person who wrote them and going from there. I don't know if you can hear the harvest bugs in the background. They are so loud. Uh, to me, that's like the sound of summer. I'm recording this over the summer. Um, all right, find A and B so that F of X is differentiable. All right, so one thing to remember is differentiability implies continuity. So if you're making something differentiable, you also have to make it continuous. And that's usually the key to solving these because you kind of need there's an A and a B in the function that we have here. We're gonna need two equations with two unknowns to be able to solve this. Also, I might point out, I think I probably had a typo in this problem because if you look at that second equation, it's two B X squared minus three B X plus one. And like, there's no A in there. And I feel like I probably wanted an A. Anyway, we're gonna try to make this continuous. So to make it continuous, we would need the limit to exist, which means we would need the limit from the left to equal the limit from the right as we approach two. All right, if that's going to be true, then we need the limit as x approaches two from the left of the branch when you're to the left of two. So when x is less than two, to equal the limit as x approaches two from the right, or the branch that you're on when x is greater than two, which is that bottom branch. All right, so this, if we just substitute in two, we're gonna get this, 16a plus six minus b. I'm really curious to hear what the audio of this sounds like. Those bugs are so loud. Maybe you can't hear them at all and I just sound like I'm complaining weirdly. Um, equals 8b minus 6b plus 1, uh, which gives us this equation. So we have 16a minus 3b equals negative 5. All right, now we need to deal with the derivatives. And basically, we want the limit of the derivative from the left to equal the limit of the derivative from the right. This work is always a little messy. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the derivative, f prime. It's going to be branches, right? Find the derivative of that first thing. So we do uh, 2a, the quantity, x plus 2 and then just plus three, and then b is a constant, so it goes away. So we have this. That's gonna be valid when x is less than two. Then we're gonna find the derivative of that bottom branch, so it'll be like four b x minus three b, and the derivative one is zero, so four b x minus three b. Now, this is only valid when x is greater than two, because we don't know if it's differentiable. We're trying to force it to be differentiable, so don't include either of them, you know, so it's like x is less than two, x is greater than two. We'll find the values, and then if we can find values, we could go back and add in the, like, greater than or equal to two if we wanted to. Um, so if we plug in two to both of these, we get this equation, eight a plus three equals five b. 
and then uh, that means that a to a minus 5b is negative 3. We now have two equations. So uh, I'm going to put stars on those. Two equations, two unknowns. We have a system. We want to solve this thing. Uh, I'm going to multiply the bottom one by negative 2 and add down. My strategy is always to eliminate one of the variables. I mean, I think that's generally the strategy. Uh, this will give me 7b is equal to 1. So obviously b is 1 7th. I didn't feel like doing it, so I just had a calculator find a because these are practice problems. a is negative 2 sevenths. So if a is negative 2 sevenths and b is 1 seventh, this thing will be differentiable. You can graph it to confirm that. You can also like plug in those values and take derivatives and all that stuff. Uh, I didn't do any of that. I'm just pretty confident that this is right. All right, next up. Find all points on f of x equals x cubed plus 9x squared plus 21x minus 31, at which the tangent line is perpendicular to the line y minus 5 equals negative 1 half quantity x plus 7. I think I might have a typo on this one too. I don't know. The answers are gross. And that's what makes me think that there's a typo, but like that doesn't need to be true. All right. So the slope that we have here is negative one half. We want something perpendicular to that. So perpendicular slopes are opposite reciprocals. So we want a slope of two. So what we really need is we need dy dx for our given function f uh, to equal two. So I'm going to find f prime and then I'm going to set it equal to two and see what happens from there. So we got uh, f prime is 3x squared plus 18x plus 21, power rule. Uh, set it equal to 2. I'm going to move the 2 over. And then I'm going to be like, this does not factor, and that's annoying. So I'm going to use a quadratic formula. So it's the opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then, I don't know, negative 18 plus or minus root 216 over 6. Apparently those are the values at which the tangent line is perpendicular to that. I don't know. They're kind of gross. I didn't really like this problem set, but whatever. It's done. I hope this was helpful and good luck.